Looking for something exciting for the entire family to do this holiday season? Take a break from all the baking, the shopping, and the endless rolls of wrapping paper and join us for an unforgettable Christmas experience complete with fun, games, music, and more. Jingle Jam, a Christmas party big enough for the whole family. Well, if there's one thing we would all agree on in the journey of life, it's that life is full of expectations. Hey, everybody, welcome to SAC's online worship experience. So excited you're with us today. If you're new, if it's your first time, we want to welcome you. You're in the right spot. We're going to have an incredible time together as we begin our Advent journey. It's the first Sunday of Advent, and we're looking forward to this time together. It's going to be powerful prayer worship time of God's word. So let's get ready to do it, everybody. A reading from Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, son of Amoz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, come, let us go up the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations, nations shall not lift up sword against, another, against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Well, hey, everybody, expectations. We all have them, and in life we experience varying degrees of fulfilled and unmet expectations. For many, dashed expectations for reasons out of their control or in their control seem to draw the life out of their ability to have future expectations. Generally, as children, our capacity to dream and long for and yearn for a preferred future is much easier than when we grow older, the weary world having not gotten to us yet, perhaps. As we grow older, trading our crayons in for the black ink pen, we struggle for the imagination of hope. We live in a world of massive expectation on the one hand and growing despair on the other. We long for a better world and yet uh, are, we're more gripped uh, than ever with anxiety and disappointment. Uh, more cases of diagnosed depression than ever are being reported. According to Mental Health America in their recent survey, 20% of American adults are battling some form of mental illness, the majority of whom go untreated. 10% of American youth struggle with mental illness. And again, the majority going untreated. Nearly 5% of adults report serious thoughts of suicide. 20% of adults report having a substance abuse issue uh, in the last year. 93% going untreated. And yet, human longing will not die. It will not fade away. It's the constant theme of music, literature, film, painting, photography, there is something in us, something in the way that we're hardwired uh, in the human race that draws us to the imaginative place of hope. Theologian Cornelius Planning, a junior, wonderfully explores the power of biblical hope in his book entitled Engaging God's World. In it, he argues that human longing is a necessary ingredient to hope. He writes, quote, according to Lewis Smedes, a compelling Christian thinker, genuine hope always combines imagination, faith, and desire. Those are the main ingredients. The hopeful person imagines a good state of affairs. He also believes that it's possible. Nobody hopes for what he's convinced is a lost cause or a logical impossibility. Finally, he desires the good state of affairs that he imagines and believes in. Biblical hope, writes Plantinga, has a wide-angle lens. It takes in whole nations and peoples. It brings into focus the entire created order, wolves and lambs, mountains and plains, rivers and valleys. When it is widest and longest, biblical hope looks forward to a new heaven and a new earth, close quote. 
um, in which death, he says, uh, and mourning and pain will have passed away, and in, and in which the Son of God receives the treasures of nations who parade into the city of God, close quote. So if I ask you today, what are you hoping for? What is your wildest expectation, your central expectation in life? C.S. Lewis in his famous essay, The Weight of Glory, argues that our expectations in life far too often uh, sink too low. He says, quote, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but actually too weak. He says, we're half-hearted creatures fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered to us like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he can't imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. He says, we are far too easily pleased. Close quote. New Testament theologian Reggie Kidd argues that the struggle of our contemporary world is much the same as the ancient world in the first couple of centuries uh, where the locus of the human struggle is revealed by a lack of hope, a deficit of hope. He says that it's not necessarily that people reject faith because of a logical analysis, but rather they simply can't imagine a world made new, a world that exists through divine purpose. He calls this malaise uh, like a sloth, uh, being a slothful existence. It's a world with no expectations. Welcome to Advent. Advent is a season of waiting, of anticipation, and more importantly, a season in which we ask ourselves again, for what am I waiting? And is what I'm waiting for, is it credible? Will it last? Is what I'm waiting for able to bring fullness of joy? Or am I waiting for something that will only disappoint in the end? Are my expectations aimed too low? Is my level of hope anywhere to be found? Advent literally means the arrival or to come. For Christians from the ancient of of days, Advent is the uh, beginning of the liturgical year in which we're reminded that we are a people in waiting, waiting for the arrival of God's kingdom, for the arrival of God himself, waiting in hope for what the prophets called shalom, the world, creation, God and humanity in that creation where everything is as it should be as God created it to be. Heaven and earth made one reality together where the glory of the Lord is reflected in and through every last jot and tittle, which is what we get in every Advent moment recorded in Scripture. God's presence with His people is the picture of heaven come to earth, the glory of God, and the joy of being in that glory with the Lord. There are multiple Advents in Scripture. Creation itself could be seen as the original Advent, the first arrival, but other moments along the way, the major redemptive moments like the Exodus story in which God's people are delivered from slavery and bondage, and of course, the Advent of Jesus Christ who comes to lead the greater Exodus, leading us out of the bondage of sin and death. Advent not only looks back at previous arrivals, but it also looks forward. It looks forward to the final advent of the return of Christ, who will bring his kingdom once and for all, who will establish a new heavens and a new earth, who will bring a once for all, uh, once for all the long awaited uh, shalom and the fullness of peace and reconciliation, a world that is the fulfillment of all hope and of every vestige of human longing. Is this the hopeful frame of your life today? Is this your great expectation? Does this expectant reality provide the framework for how you live your life today? See, this is Advent waiting, and if we're honest, we probably have struggled with this. After all, waiting isn't easy. Having the right expectations can be difficult to maintain. In a world of short-term temptations and desires, keeping an eternal perspective is tough. It's a step of faith which is where the prophet Isaiah can help us. Isaiah served the prophetic office in Judah, the southern kingdom of Israel from the middle of the 8th century uh, into the early 7th century BC. The northern kingdom had fallen to the Assyrians and in Judah, God's people had lost their God expectation. They smugly turned from the Lord pursuing lesser things, material, substance, sexual promiscuity, political prestige, Their expectations may have elevated according to worldly standards and heights, but they devolved in comparison to the dream of God. They had a form of outward religion still, which they loved to parade around as Isaiah describes in Isaiah chapter one, but their hearts were far from God. Their expectations had become worldly and base. 
You see, this is the context of Isaiah's prophetic ministry. This was the razor's edge of the prophet's ministry, calling God's people back to the greatest expectation. In our passage today in Isaiah 2, we get a poem of hope. We get the vision reframed. Isaiah gives us a poem found also in the prophet Micah, chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Perhaps this was a common anthem in Israel. Isaiah writes in verses 2 and 3, quote, It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it. And many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths, close quote. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. You see, it's a call to faithful waiting, which is an active participation of hopeful expectation. Isaiah reminds us, reminds God's people of their chosen heritage and call to be a representative people for the sake of the whole world. That they were to be God's covenant people because God was at work reconciling the world to himself. And that the mountain of the house of the Lord would one day uh, be the mountain of the Lord himself. All nations would then stream to the mountain of God. They would say, let us go to the mountain of God so we can learn of his ways and walk in his paths. You see, Isaiah keeps painting the beautiful picture. He says more. He goes on in verses 3 through 5, giving us this incredible scene, saying, quote, He shall judge between the nations and shall decide disputes for many peoples, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. See, Isaiah is raising our eyes to the greatest expectation, to the fullness of God's work of redemption, the world as it was always intended to be. What Isaiah is describing is the fullness of the kingdom that comes through the return of Christ in that ultimate sense, a kingdom that was inaugurated in the first appearing of Christ and a kingdom that was prefigured in type, shadow, and word, and law, a kingdom that was to be typified in the life of Israel. But, of course, Israel fell woefully short. But God, um, but through whom God would bring a perfect prophet, a perfect priest, a perfect king, Jesus. The angels reminded us of this uh, from Luke's gospel when they announced the birth of Christ. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Again, this is a glimpse of the broadest reaches of redemptive hope. In Jesus, the long-awaited rival, the advent of the beginnings of Isaiah's vision, and an emphatic vindication of Advent waiting. See, this is what we're waiting for, even when we don't realize it, even when we get diverted or when we just grow weary in well-doing. Advent reminds us that anything less than the greatest expectation all things new to the glory of his name, anything less than that will prove to leave us empty and dry. And it reminds us that our Advent waiting is an active preoccupation, holding to the promises of God and living in to the dream of God, even as we wait for its fullness to arrive, which means that our first move in Advent waiting is to come to the mountain of the Lord ourselves, this mountain who is Christ, to learn the ways of the Lord and to walk in those ways. This is where the imagination of faith will catch fire once more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Amen. Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God the gloomy clouds of
Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Well, hey, everybody, thank you so much for being a part of our online worship experience today from wherever you might be connecting, whenever you may be connecting with this. We're so glad you're with us, and our prayer for you is simple, the love of Christ over your life. It's such a joy to be together in worship online. Uh, and if you're in the Wilmington area, we want to encourage you, we want to invite you to join us for worship in person, Sundays, 8.30 and 10 a.m., with community hour in between coffee and bagels on our front lawn at 9:15, kids ministry going strong throughout the morning so we would love to meet you in person you can plan your visit just go to our website and explore what it's like to be with us in person we look forward to seeing you then there's so many ways that you can connect discover and grow more in your relationship with Jesus with us here at SJC, we encourage you, go to our website, click the Event Hub button, and you can find more information about how you can connect with us in our mission and ministry, and we look forward to that. And if you've been blessed by this service, we want to encourage you, send this link out to a friend, to your social feed, be a digital missionary with us, help us spread the good news of the gospel, and we appreciate that a whole lot. We're so thankful for partnership. We're thankful for your contributions and gifts uh, to the mission and ministry here at SJC. So many people come together in the body of Christ to make that happen. Time, treasure, talent, it all adds up. 
so that we can continue to do the work that God's called us to do. Your financial giving is so important. Every gift, large and small, it all adds up to help us make a difference in the lives of others for the sake of his name. You can continue to give financially by simply sending in a check to the address at the bottom of the screen. You can give online by going to our website and hitting the giving button. Or you can give by text. Simply enter the numbers at the bottom of the screen and follow the prompts along for a safe and secure donation. We appreciate that so much. We appreciate you and your partnership so much. May the Lord build in me and you hearts of generosity as we respond to his love and generosity to us, his kindness to us in the giving of his son, Jesus. Nothing better. God bless you in your giving today. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks. For all your goodness and loving kindness. to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation. Preservation. And all the blessings of this life. But above all, immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and the hope of glory and we pray give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory. throughout all ages. Amen. Well, I just love thinking about the gospel and God's promises to us and his fulfillment through the sending of his son Jesus to us as the greatest of expectations that we as followers of Jesus have the greatest reason for hope, have the greatest reason for the greatest expectations. It's in Christ, it's in the fullness of what he's done for us and the fullness of what's to come at his return. That is motivation enough for Advent waiting. It's been awesome to be together with you today. Thank you so much for being a part of our worship gathering. We want to stay connected with you moving forward. You can find us anywhere and everywhere on social media at S-J-C-I-L-M. Hope you'll connect with us there. And friends, remember as you go that Jesus loves you. He really, really does. And life is short. We don't have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So 
Let us be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Until next time, take care, everybody.